Welcome to Trading Lounge and the US indices for the 20th of February. We'll be looking at the S&P and also the NASDAQ today. So um, we have still a little more of a move to come up into the 33,400 uh, area before we see a correction there. So let's go in and have a look at this particular structure uh, here and how it will end. So moving to the intraday here that's not what I was looking for this one here so we're looking for one little move up into the uh, 34 which is a Fibonacci number so we should see we can also see that the market is struggling a little bit from this point here or strong here and now it's sort of struggling through here I can count this this structure from wave four here to wave five, I can count it in two different ways. Um, so we will be having a look at that on in terms of the um, the uh, S and P and the Nasdaq. So this is the first one where we can have wave one and two here, and three and four here, and one and two here, and three and A and a B and a C here for wave four, and then up for wave five here. The other way to count this is. Get a bit more data in here. So it's in an ending sort of fashion. So, so from wave four here, we count wave one here, wave two here, and then five waves here, one and two and three and four and five here for wave three. An A wave here, an A, an A and a B and a C wave here for the B wave and down for the C wave here for wave four and then counting five waves to the upside uh, here for for this. Um, so we should see another move coming up from this low here, which is roughly the 38.2% retracement level from wave two here. So move up into 34 uh, area there. Um, I don't think the tick chart can give us much more on that. Um, it's at the 38.2% retracement level now. Um, maybe it can come back a little bit further, but um, yeah, we should see a move up from that point there soon. Um, yeah, and counting this up here, I'm looking at one and two here and three here and four here, and then one and two and three and four and five here. It does leave wave three a little bit short here, but I'll just sort of go with that because it makes wave three here nice and long. So let's just see if we get support on this trend line here. This trend line was just taken from the top, from the from these last two tops here and brought across onto this low here. Um, yeah, so it looks like it's starting to bounce now, so that should be okay. It might get a little bit more complicated there. Let's have a look at the Nasdaq. So the Nasdaq here as well, uh, from wave four here, we can look at it as wave one. Excuse me, that should be sitting there, I believe. Wave one and two here, then five waves up here for three, an A and a B and a C for four here, and then moving up five. So we're looking at it at 9,800. I know this market, I mean, you know, maybe I've got this count wrong, and this is where we need to be a little bit careful because when markets see large numbers like this here, they certainly like to head up towards that number there. So um, we're certainly not going to turn bearish unless we get a nice impulse wave to the downside. Uh, just checking this out a little bit further. I'm not sure what. Um, yeah, just one sort of little point here is that, you know, wave, wave one here has been quite strong and that leaves wave three really quite short here. So that's the sort of my concern that um, we may not have the right count here. But um, if this is correct and this third wave is here, then we don't really want to see from wave two to wave three here. That's the length of that. We would need to see wave five here shorter. So we don't really want it going past the nine eight here at that point. If that's the case, then um, this count is wrong. But I'm looking at it to terminate at um, nine eight there or close to it. Um, I can see that we can count this up here in, in two different ways as well. So we'll have a look at that. I'm not sure what I've done on the 15 minute chart here. Yeah, so one way to count this up here is, is having wave one here and wave two here. And then having all of this as wave three here and five waves and wave four here. And then having this in five waves here. Um, so that would leave 
one, two, three, four, five. So that would leave a top in place here. So if that top is breached there, then we will look at it um, like this on the tick chart here, which would be just another way to look at it, uh, more expanding to the upside of wave one and two here. But then looking at this as one and two and three and four here, and then wave five here to make wave three, and then wave four to come back, and then wave five to move up here a little bit higher here above the... We don't want to go in too far above the 9.8 though because it will leave us a little bit, um, won't leave wave 3 and 5 intact there. So um, yeah, a couple of ways to to, uh, to count that. Alrighty, just a short video, but um, yeah, so we can expect to see Friday um, head higher. And you know, normally when Friday heads higher, we'll see Monday head higher as well. Um, but if that's not the case, if either one of those days is not the case, then we know that we've got a change in trend at that point. So that's the important thing about Friday and Monday, because in our bullish weekly cycle, we'll see uh, fr Friday and Monday be bullish. And it's just natural to see Monday be bullish if um, Friday is, is closing strong as well. So if we don't see Monday strong, then we also, it's just another little indicator to tell us that uh, change in trend there. Alrighty, thanks for tuning in. Cheers.